Welcome to The Recon Trader. In today's video, I will share with you my crypto scalping strategy, which utilizes my recon scalper indicator that I recently created over in TradingView, along with the VWAP indicator and a moving average. And so the basic concept of this strategy is to get a signal from my recon scalper indicator. And that would be when we see one of these candles on the indicator print above the signal line which is the red or green line you see running through the chart anytime we get one of these candles to breach down or above the signal line that would essentially be a signal to then take a look at the possibility of entering a scalp trade and with the scalping strategy, you can scalp both long and short in a bear or bull market. So with that all being said, let's jump over to a chart and take a look at what this strategy would actually look like. And so we'll start over here on Ethereum USDT perpetual contracts over on the Bybit exchange. And I'm looking at the three minute candles. Now, when I'm scalping, I'm typically looking at a much faster time frame. And in this case, I'm looking at the three minute candles. Now, down here at the bottom of the chart, you can see the recon scalper indicator. If I double click that and blow that up to the full screen. Now the vertical lines are not actually part of the indicator. They're just something I've dropped in to help you, the viewer of this video, to identify the actual crossovers. For instance, this red vertical line identifies the cross down through the signal line right here, or this green vertical line identifies the cross above the signal line. But again, these vertical lines are not part of the indicator, so I can actually eliminate those. And this is what the indicator would actually look like. And so you're looking for these candles to cross below or above the signal line that's running through the chart. Now, since I did create this indicator, obviously the settings are the default settings because those are the settings I would use, but you would be able to do some configuration changes to this particular indicator. Like you could change the fast length to let's say nine. And by changing the fast length to nine, you can see we now have fewer signals. So if and when I release this to the public, it will be configurable. Now, with that being said, I will be releasing this indicator to the YouTube channel members and with that being said if you're not a recon trader channel member you can just jump over to the recon trader YouTube page click on join and that will give you the opportunity to join the channel and the benefit of being one of the members is you have access to some of my private indicators that I have not made public I have released the Excel version of the trading journal for example and you get some exclusive videos as well and in the future I plan to do some live streaming of live day trades once I figure out a streaming software that won't lock up my trading platform but that is enough jaw jacking about that. Let's jump back over here to the charts and take a look at how this indicator works with an actual trading strategy. Now, you do need to actually have a strategy when trading. You're not just jumping in on any signal and blindly trading. You want to actually have some rules of engagement. And my scalper rules of engagement obviously include a signal from the recon trader scalper indicator. I'm looking for the price crossing over the EMA line, which we will take a look at when we jump back to the chart. I'm also considering the location of VWAP relative to the price. Again, we'll take a deeper dive at what that actually entails when we jump back over to the charts. And if all three of these are basically a go, then I start to pinpoint my end entry, my stop loss, and my profit target. Once I have those identified, then I'd want to validate if volume is increasing or decreasing. I then start to observe the price action via level twos or the order book on the exchange. Again, we'll take a look at that here in a moment. And then if everything is a go, I pull the trigger and execute the trade and continue to monitor the price action as I get ready for the disengagement part of my strategy. Now, the first two are fairly obvious as far as disengagement being stopped out or my target being achieved. That would go ahead and close out the trade. 
Next would be trend broken. That would be as I'm watching the price action. If I see a reversal in the trend, I might go ahead and tap out. Another item that would cause me to tap out early would be unusual level two activity. If I start to see a lot of buying or selling pressure, depending on what direction my trade is in, I might go ahead and tap out. Also, I'm always watching the momentum and volume. If it starts to get fatigued, that would be another reason to tap out. And then one of the things I see a lot of traders making a big mistake on when they're trading is they let their winners turn into losers. You don't want to let your winners turn into losers. And what is meant by that? If your profit target is say 1%, and the price has moved maybe half a percent in your direction, you might consider actually moving your stop loss to break even or maybe even locking in a quarter percent. That is how I actually manage my trades. For example, once the profit reaches 50% of my profit target, I will move my stop loss to either break even or maybe 25% of the total profit target. That way I can at least either break even, not incur a loss, or maybe even lock in a little bit of profit while still letting the trade have the opportunity of reaching my profit target. And so that pretty much wraps up my scalper's rules of engagement. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. So if we jump back over here to the charts, I will drop in those vertical lines once again. So you can see what I would be looking at for possible trade. And I believe we have about 10 trades here on ETH again on the three minute candles over on Bybit. And the first trade would be a short. And that is where we see the price drop below the 9 EMA, which is this yellow line running through the chart. So that's one of my rules is I want to see the price crossing over the EMA. And then down here on the recon scalper indicator, we don't actually get across, but we do get the candle to close pretty much right on the signal line. So I could either enter the trade here or I could wait for the actual breach down below of the signal line. In this case, given the prior two candles, I would more than likely enter the trade here and this is not an automated system. It's not intended to be an automated system. You're going to have to do some tactical analysis when trading this type of strategy. Now, the last thing I look for is where is VWAP in relation to the actual price and VWAP is above. And so right now, East current price action is bearish. So I would be willing to go ahead and take a trade. So I have my first three rules of engagement are a go. Now I have to identify my entry, my stop loss and my take profit. Now, in order to identify entry, take profit and stop loss, I actually have to wait for this candle to close. And once it does close, I would look to enter around that close, maybe not exactly at the close. And so if I base my entry as the close price on the candle, now I would be looking for a one to two risk versus reward ratio over here on ETH. And typically I can give ETH about a half a percent in the way of my stop loss and a 1% profit target when I'm scalping. And that half a percent stop loss versus a 1% take profit gives me my one to two risk versus reward ratio. So if we enter on the close of the candle, half a percent stop loss would be up around this area here which would actually be above this previous lower high so that would not be a bad area for a stop loss and then my take profit would be at one percent and that would be down here and you can see we were never actually in danger of hitting the stop loss and we do actually hit the take profit. And so this first trade would be a win. And now the next trade would be a trade for a long trade. Now the price has crossed above the EMA, the yellow line. We also have received a cross on the signal line down here on the indicator. And so now I just need to check where the VWAP is in relation to the actual price on the close. And since I'm shooting for a 1% profit, I need VWAP to be at least 1% away because a lot of times VWAP can act as resistance. So it, VWAP's almost one and a half percent away. So we'd go ahead and take this trade. 
Now I say that, but I would actually look at the order book before I jumped into any of these trades and I'd read the level twos. And so I'd be looking for either on the sell side or the buy side, one side lopsided versus the other. And for instance, right now on the buy side, we had a little bit of weight down there and the price is starting to push up. The other thing I look at is recent trades. Now we just hit a lot of red, so the price is gonna sell off obviously. And we do start to get that sell off. But again, the buyers are stepping up and piling up here and they're pushing the price back up. And so I do take into consideration what's happening over here on the order book. And so assuming the order book was a go, we would actually enter on this candle here. My half a percent stop loss would put me down towards the bottom of this candle, which would be ideal place for a stop loss. And then my take profit would be at 1%. Well, we don't ever hit that. And in fact, the price rolls over on us. And I don't think we ever even hit 50%. No, we don't. So this one would be a loser as we would eventually get stopped out over here somewhere. Now the next trade up would be another long. And again, I would want to look and see where is VWAP in relation to the actual price. And we've got our 1%. And so we do have the cross of the EMA and we do have the cross down here on the signal. And so again, we would check the order book and the level twos, everything looked good there. Then we'd put our stop loss at around that 0.5%, which puts us towards the bottom of all these candles and wicks. So that's actually a good level of support. And then our profit target obviously be up here around 1%. We don't ever make 1%, but we do actually get to 50%. So at that point in time, I would move my stop loss up to break even. So worst case, this trade is going to be break even, or I could move it to a quarter percent, which would be just below the high of this candle and the low of this candle. So you might want to actually lock in a quarter percent profit if the price turns against you, which eventually it does. So at a minimum, this trade would be a break even or a small win. Now the next trade up again, we break down through the EMA and we get the break down below the signal line. So this would be a short and again, VWAP is still above and you can see VWAP is red. So we are bearish. And so if we were to take a look at our stop loss or take profit based on the entry on the close, we go up half a percent is going to put us just above the high of this candle and above the EMA. So again, a good level for a stop loss. And then our take profit would be at 1%, which we achieve on the wick of this candle here. And so again, we were never really at risk of being stopped out before hitting our profit target. So now we have two shorts that were definitely wins, one loss and a break even or a small win. Now, the final trade we'll look at over here on ETH is going to be another short opportunity. And obviously we're below VWAP, so that's an all go for the short. We get the cross down below EMA9, and on the same candle, we get a cross down below the signal on the indicator. So if we enter on the close price, our half a percent stop loss would put us right above the top of all these candles from back here to here so again probably a decent level of resistance against the price moving up against us now on the flip side our one percent profit is going to be down in this area and we achieve our profit target on this candle here so this one ends up being a winner and so out of basically 10 trades, we had a minimum of five winners, three losers, and then two either small winners or break even. And so at a minimum, we have a 50% win rate. And if we jump over here to our break even win rate percentage, if I can achieve a 50% win rate when I'm shooting for a one to two risk versus reward ratio, I will be profitable. In reality, a 33% win rate would be a break even win rate. Therefore, anything above 33% is a winning win rate. And so for this example, out of 10 trades, we only lost three of those or 30% of the 10 trades. We won at least five of them or 50%. And the other two trades are either break even or small profit. Now, at least one of them, I think when the price started to move back, I would have gone ahead and tapped out. So that one would have been a small win. And then we'll just call the other one break even. And so if I take one of those two 
break even or small win trades as a small win. Now I'm at a 60% win rate. And the fact I'm shooting for a one to two versus risk versus reward ratio, this definitely is a very profitable strategy. Now, if you're wondering, does this work on say Bitcoin? It does, but you're gonna need to make some adjustments. If we jump over here to say the Bitcoin five minute chart versus the Ethereum three minute chart, you can see I have 10 trades here and you can see VWAP is acting as major resistance to Bitcoin's price action. And that is why I make sure where VWAP is in relation to the actual price, depending on what direction I'm going. Now, with that all being said, with Bitcoin, I'm not actually looking at 1% and half a percent stop loss. I'm actually looking at half a percent profit and a quarter percent stop loss. Now, with that in mind, with the VWAP acting as that resistance, you can see I only would probably take two long trades based on the relationship of price and the location of VWAP. As you can see down here on the indicator, there are a lot of signal opportunities like right here, but I mean, the price is getting rejected at VWAP. Again, we get another one here, but again, price is almost at VWAP. So you can see each one of these signals I wouldn't take these trades because the price is too close to VWAP and VWAP has been acting as pretty much resistance this whole way down. And thus I end up with a lot more shorts than I do long. Now I'm not going to dive into each one of these trades. This video is way longer than I anticipated, but I can tell you there were eight winners and two losers on this setup. And one of the losers was the short right here, but one of the winners that is kind of questionable whether I would have taken the long or not is this one here. So if you took one of the wins away, that'd put me at 70% win rate, which again, given my one to two risk versus reward ratio, half a percent profit, quarter percent loss, that's a one to two risk versus reward, 70% win rate, extremely profitable once again. And this actually ends up being my second loss in reality. The two longs were wins. I had two shorts that were actually losses. But if I can get involved with eight shorts and six of them be wins, again, I'm winning the battle. So I think that's enough jaw jacking for this video. This is a lot longer than I intended but there was a lot to cover. I will be releasing this particular indicator to the Recon channel members over on YouTube probably by the end of this week. So be looking for that if you're one of my members. If you're not one of my members, you might want to consider joining if you're interested in having access to a lot of my private indicators I don't release publicly over on TradingView. So with that all being said, if you like this video, do me a favor, spike a like. You might want to shoot that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section down below. And until next time, remember, never send your money into battle without first doing your recon. See you in the next video.